become an essential threat to our democracy. So consider this justice. Thank you for listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com, the number one listener-supported radio station on the Internet. Please help support this station so this battle can continue forward. Revolution Radio! The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host... just walked into the thick of it. This is Revolution Radio, the story behind the story. Major Burdock reporting from the eye of the hurricane. Actually, it's a typhoon over here. I know some uh, some folks uh, are having some storms on the East Coast as well. But uh, we've got Phil joining us as well here in Manila. Uh, I don't think uh, our folks at the studio, we weren't able to get people <laughs> over there. It is it's coming down. We got a lot of water uh, and uh, rain and uh, rain that goes sideways over here. So uh, <laughs> we're we're hunkered down. We've got plenty of power and internet. So we'll be bringing this broadcast to you remote. Uh, Phil is on the other side. I'm actually reporting from Makati today. Nice part of town. Come over here and uh, just make sure to relax a little bit. Uh, and you know, just enjoy life a little bit. But um, yeah, you guys just walked into the storm. This is there's there's a ton of stuff that's going on right now. So what we can do is start by I'm gonna just talk about something that I was I just got off the phone with a guy who. He had heard about this before, and I know that these these start you know these these conversations are starting, and people are really talking about whether or not we can do RICO, whether or not there can be a RICO indictment against Facebook to start with, and possibly include Twitter and Google into this whole mix, um, primarily because uh, there's uh, this class action lawsuit that we talked about a couple weeks ago in California is going to be, It's this is going to get brought up probably, it's certainly to a, a federal court and certainly it will go through appeals, and, and you're going to see this isn't going to go away. And it starts not with the censorship. It actually starts with them just being bad business people, liars, and thieves. Uh, it's not enough to control everything. You have to lie to get more money. And I'm talking about the base of this lawsuit, which is them selling advertising to people that don't exist, saying that there is a market that doesn't exist and accepting money to advertise to people that don't exist and advertising that their users who many, I mean, the, the one good thing that you can always count on when it, when it comes to this is, uh, and 
it's not a good thing, obviously, but people die, okay? And those Facebook accounts never get deleted. And dogs are not being Dogs aren't being, uh, you know, deleted after dogs die because you and, and they're not buying advertising. So here we go, folks. Anyway, uh, let's see if uh, we've got Phil on the line. Do we? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm here. All right. Well, let's. Uh, I mean, do you think Rico is a is a a respectable? Uh, idea to go after? I mean, you're talking about racketeering and, uh, you know, what's it's organized crime. Do you think, is that outrageous? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, honestly, when you, if you, if you see like uh, the cross platform or, you know, the, the cross network deplatforming and things like that, it does seem to be, uh, you know, kind of a, uh, uh, planned so to speak I, I i think it was yeah it was adam smith the father of capitalism uh i love this quote something along the lines of you know whenever two folks from the same industry get together uh uh it's it's a it's a rare occurrence but it's always uh, a conspiracy to drive up prices so at this point though i think we've gone past sheer profit motive it's power motive that's why yeah. that's why you see uh, crappy movies with social agendas being made that make no money, and then they're like, you know what? Let's do it again because it's a religion, you know. Like it's true. <laughs> it's true. There really are, you know. I mean, bringing up the, the movies. I mean, um, Hollywood is definitely involved in all of this. So I mean, uh, and of course, mainstream media. So we'll we'll have to figure out. Who is making the money? And the money is about control right now. Right. And so, and the money is actually coming from us uh, without our reason. permission. I, I don't trust yeah. social trust because there's too many millionaires and billionaires trying to convince everybody we should share. You first. <laughs> really? You start. You start. You start. How about you start and then, like, you give me some of your money and I'll share some of the money you shared with me? That sounds like fun. Wink, wink. You know, that's, that's a really good point, Phil. Oh man, you have a way of putting things. Socialist. You know, maybe one day I'll feel I'll feel liberal white guilt, but I'm not there yet. You know, I had a really good conversation with um, and I can't out them. Um, uh, it's a, a really interesting couple. Uh, the guy's from Thailand, and his wife is French. And she works for a mainstream media outlet, uh, and uh, she's a freelance writer. And I, yeah, I don't think we can afford her, but uh, I did say, hey, listen, we're we're hiring liberals. <laughs> we're looking for a liberal writer. Uh, and uh, you know, I was pleasantly surprised that uh, oh my lord, don't say anything. She is a libertarian and supports Donald Trump. Okay, but can't say that to anyone uh, in her network. So she's closeted, and that's why I can't out her and I can't name the network. But it is a uh, it's a three letter network, and so. It really took the better part of an hour for to come out of the closet with me. Uh, there's a little bit of trust involved here, but um, you know, and this, I mean, one of my my laptops died, and I brought out the uh, the other one that has the Hillary for prison sticker on it. <laughs> You'd be surprised at how many people just come up to you, especially Australians, who are saying, "Hey, you know." We don't necessarily like Trump, but we don't like what's going on with the media. And that's a that's a huge thing right now. It has to change. So, I mean, uh, you're either going to have, it has to change through lawsuits. It, you know, I mean, there have to be a, what do you think the equivalent of the Me Too movement for this, this conspiracy? In the media, and it is a conspiracy. 
we sh- we need to come up with a hashtag for this, don't you think? <laughs> well, you know, uh, so you know what they say about hashtags, there, Phil? it beats real. You know what they say about hashtags? It beats well, real. Phil, uh, we're <laughs> <laughs> oh no, can you not hear me? I, I mean, there, there has to be a hashtag or some of this because it's just, uh, it's, uh, yeah, you're, you're fine over here. Uh, if, you're, if you're clipping in and out, we do have this, uh, storm. It, you know, the one thing I noticed is that, um, even if the storm, you know, typhoon, is especially here, if that's not going to get you, and there is a good reason I mean, not for for people not to to get it, you know, to get in a car and be driving around today. But the idea of the storm is enough to make sure that nobody is working today. <laughs> so it's just the concept. All you do is say typhoon or get a warning on your cell phone. I guarantee you, nobody is really working today in Manila. Uh, there's some good reasons. I mean, you really don't want to be out in, in this weather. But um, and there, there, you know, there's some serious flooding going on here. So let's hope everybody's safe. Uh, we need to keep an eye on the hurricane over in uh, the Carolinas, which I understand is just to be absolutely uh this guy and and this isn't uncommon okay so i mean um this is something that that uh it's kind of like a logical thing that you have to think about if you're in charge of a boat you're the captain of a boat and let's say that you're not the owner but you're the captain your job is to make sure the damn thing doesn't sink and so uh typically people who own boats especially if that's your home uh, you want to protect it. And when a big storm comes in, a hurricane or a typhoon or something like that, you will find people that actually take their boat out to sea. And if they've got decent information as to where it's going, where the storm is going to be, uh, usually anyone that does that, they're not an idiot. Um, and it's, uh, you know, if you have a tsunami warning, uh, for example, I was out uh, – the first time that I understood really what a tsunami was, uh, this is a long time ago. There was a major, major earthquake in, in Alaska, and I happened to be in Hawaii at the time, uh, out on a boat. And so we got this – there was ample warning because it came from Alaska. So we were able to get into shore – and we went to high ground, and he took his boat uh, because that's obviously the safest place. You won't even feel a tsunami out there. There's, I mean, you know, you, you know, the the wave goes totally underneath you. So the safest place to be is actually out at sea. Now, doing that in a hurricane is is usually not a good idea, uh, unless you're trying to save property, and. Uh, I think the Coast Guard has an understanding with people, but they really do need to, if you've got these Jimmy Buffett type of people that are just going out saying, hey, damn, the torpedoes full stream ahead, uh, we, we it's after the storm, because you can't put people's lives at risk. Uh, in a storm like that, uh, you, you've got people in the Coast Guard and, and people who are in the Navy that uh, will be helping now. And people die on these rescue missions. The, rescue, the idiots, the real idiots, uh, who are warned about not going out. Uh, need to understand you can do that, but don't expect anyone to come save you and risk their lives to save you. So uh, I think that that should be the case right now. With you can you can take that as a metaphor for 
pretty much what we're going to be talking about for the next hour or so, uh, is be warned. Okay, do what you want, but there's there's consequences, and you're going to have to sit and stick on those words before somebody saves you, uh, before you get bailed out by something. And God forbid, imagine if these uh, companies like Google, Twitter, and I know I'm doing a really weird segue here, but imagine if they didn't make money, if they were operated like banks, banks needed to be bailed out. So imagine a, a structure where these people had no money, and now our entire communication system worldwide needs to be subsidized. Who are they going to be asking and are the, you know, they're going to have to make concessions. Uh, so I think that that is broke and as if they're going to be asking the American people to bail them out. Because I guarantee you, the class action lawsuits and the antitrust is going to be saying if they continue to behave this way it's obvious that they have no intention of behaving anywhere you know any way else so what are we going to do i mean uh we're going to have to break them up and something else is going to have to happen amazon is we're going to have to take a look at their network and see hey listen do we really want the cia to have uh one single contract with one guy whose motives are questionable, uh, it's not a good idea. Uh, and to create its own personal cloud in a secure, you know, like, first of all, putting it in the cloud, <laughs> that's just really stupid. I, by the way, I hate that word. It's a bunch of servers that people. Yeah, have. yeah. What what was it? I cloud heard there's nonsense. no such it's thing nonsense. as the cloud. Nonsense. Clouds have been around ever since you put two computers together. Okay? Right. There's and no it, such thing yeah, as the cloud. Yeah, you would have other people's computers. <laughs> you there just is bring your cloud. I mean, it's. Yeah. If you put together a hosting site, if you've ever like, installed a package on my laptop right now, I, have, I mean, technically, actually, I have something called Own Cloud. There's the laptop that I'm on right now. That's the cloud. Okay, uh, it's ridiculous what's happening. Um, so I mean, what you know? Let's step back from this whole thing. Um, let me ask you something. What upset you the most this week? I mean, I think we're we're chopping in and out on Phil. Are you with me, Phil? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to ask you what uh, what really upset you. What got your blood boiling this week? We covered a lot of news, man. Uh, what what really got you going? Oh gosh, this is difficult. I only got like four hours of sleep last night, so I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> what made me rage this week? Uh, yeah, this week in life. In uh, life. Ah, uh, wow. Um, Not getting well, you know, sick? I mean, uh, it, 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 of course, it's the, the 9-11 anniversary is always, always upsets me because, you know, I mean, and, and not just not just the fact that uh, it's the anniversary of, of the U.S. being attacked, blah, 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 but just all else that it, uh, that it represents, you know, trillions of trillions and trillions of dollars worth of debt for useless wars uh for oil in israel you know uh oh here we go uh something that pissed me off just last night uh somebody talking about uh i was looking through one of our articles in the memes about uh barack obama and donald trump you know it just hit me mm -hmm. how i saw somebody earlier this week in social media is uh, talking about, you know, oh, I miss Barack Obama. They shared a video of nothing but thoughtful pauses in between Barack Obama speaking. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, he's trained in NLP. You know what else? 
He's also the only Nobel Peace Prize winner who, A, set the record for droning civilians and children's, and B, <laughs> the only Nobel Peace Prize winner. Like, remember, we were like, hey, let's give him a Nobel Peace Prize and maybe he'll earn it? That happened. That happened. Yeah. He's been a yeah. Chicago community organizer and a He's junior so senator. Right. And then they're like, wait a minute, we know he's going to do great things. If we give him the prize, he'll earn it later. And I mean, yeah. if you earn it, you mean kill more kids with drones in unmanned yeah. strike? And the only, only Nobel Peace Prize winner to ever order a bombing on another Nobel Peace Prize winner, Mr. <laughs> President, it's Doctors Without Borders. <laughs> Thoughtful pause. Go ahead and kill him. You know, I bet it was a real nice, thoughtful pause that time. <laughs> That's funny. You're so right. I mean, it's almost like a a desperate laugh that I have right now because you're right about this, and it's it's scary and pathetic, but it's ridiculous. It's so far out. It's like Time, you know, Time Magazine's Man of the Year. It, you know, what are we going to do this time? Um, you know, who do we put on that cover? It doesn't mean anything anymore. I mean, Nobel, uh, apparently the same people that uh, got rocked, Nobel, uh, the whole committee got rocked by a little sex Me Too type of sex scandal. Uh, and I noticed those people are back on the board of directors. I mean, it was just a little hiccup over there. Uh, you got to wonder who's handing out these prizes. Uh, from what I, is isn't it? A, it's still a million dollars, right? I mean, if you win the Nobel Peace Prize, it's there's money involved, right? It's not just a medal. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I believe so. You, yeah, you know like a, that reminds me though. Seeing as Alfred Nobel was the guy that invented dynamite, maybe he would dig that. You know? Yeah, yeah, you know, the guy with the bombs. <laughs> rock out, yeah, total destruction, man. You know, I mean. Demolition, I mean, that whole thing uh, is uh, <laughs> people that are making explosives. Um, and I think I've mentioned these these folks to you. And hopefully uh, they might be, you know, I might be able to have these these folks call in. They're, they're fans of the Goldwater. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a husband and wife who uh, they spent their careers making atomic weapons. Uh, so they worked at Lawrence Livermore and um, it, both of them together throughout their lives uh, made the best nuclear weapon that the, the world has ever seen. And that was their job. And so it, needless to say, when you're at a dinner party <laughs> and you ask these folks, hey, what, you know, what was your, you know, how, what have you done in your life? What do you do? Um, it's an interesting question. You know, it's an interesting response in that um, there is a standard response saying we make, the, you know, we made the world safe uh, because people are going to make those things and we have to make sure that we have the best. So anyway, I got into a conversation earlier uh, with another person who's kind of in this group. They're Goldwater fans as well. Uh, we we're talking about the border. So, Phil, did you see that video that the guy from Texas made of all the, you know, all the all the people crossing the border? Oh yeah, yeah, right. I mean, it was crazy. It was like hundreds of people crossing the border. It could um, be worse. Have you seen the boat people in Europe? Like, you know, oh, folks yeah. are sprawled out on the beach. They're just having a nice, leisurely vacation. And then all of a sudden, it looks like Normandy. It's D-Day. The yeah. invasion landed. It, it the really is. On the, the, on the beaches of France. Yeah, <laughs> except it's on, you know, it's on the Med. You know, they're they're going into Nice. You know, they're, they're going to head over to Nice and Monte Carlo. Um, but I had it, you know... A lot of I got into a lot of trouble by mentioning this, uh, and I've been talking about this for a while, and people think I'm joking about this. Uh, but after seeing that video, I came back to the same conclusion. If I don't understand, 
if there is any other reason that you would use a like what other purpose would you possibly have uh, for a landmine than that uh, I think that we should mine the border what do you think Phil well yeah of course you know uh, this is the thing like it, it I, I I consider myself somewhat libertarian as opposed to authoritarian but here's the issue with libertarianism the, the no borders thing if you're going to get rid of borders you need to do the rest of the stuff first because now if we open the borders but shut down the free stuff all these free services then mm. then you don't have people rushing to let's go over there they've got free stuff you know you know, my cousin went over there, and you get a job, and you're working under the table, and you don't pay taxes, but you can still get all the the tax tax services. You know, see, that's that's that. Uh, it's <laughs> there's that word again. Let's let's use let's use some jargon. It's not sustainable. <laughs> it really sustainable. Is, sustainable. It's not, it's not even biodegradable. Damn it. <laughs> All right. Well, here's here's another concept. Okay, uh, uh, landmines on the border. I mean, people can call in about that. I don't know if we can take calls. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Rowe is producing a show today, so I mean, feel free to uh, patch in some callers. Uh, I don't think that we're connected to our studio. I mean, again, I don't think the studio is manned at the moment. Uh, again, there's a big storm over here. Well, but um, Mr. Rowe here. Um, if uh, Mr. Rowe, yeah, we can take calls if uh, if need be. What do you think about landmines on the border, Mr. Rowe? Um, add those to the gun turrets, the automatic gun turrets. Um, but, there we go. Uh, you know, it, it, you could put the first the first uh, layer could be like warning paintball, you know, so that or or yeah. so that people will be detoured. Then you can have signs in multiple languages that say when you go right. past this line. <laughs> yeah, it's serious. Yeah. But uh, if anybody would like to call in, um, you can. We have a number. Uh, you can call 415-691-6204. That's 415-691-6204. Uh, or if you know on Skype, uh, you can always uh, come in through Freedom Screen at Skype as well. We'll patch you in. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Rowe. And I'm going to go one step further. You know, we've got chemical landmines, but start with the signage, and you're really going to have to make good on your promises. <laughs> so, and then maybe some pictures about what happened. You know, if you go past this point, this is going to happen to you. You've been warned. So, um, the other thing, too, I mean, with immigration, uh, just to tie this in, I mean, that landmines on the border. I mean, obviously, it, there would be a huge uproar. I mean, but Princess Diana, uh, she's, she's been dead for a while, and she was an advocate of uh, removing landmines. Um, I don't know. I think that the very fact that we're having to talk about it means that there's certainly a problem. But here's the other thing. How about, and I'm again, I don't really like making laws, especially when it comes to money. Uh, but this one might be required. If you're going to be sending an international uh, money order or a, a Western Union or whatever, how many other money exchanges there are, I mean, tens of thousands of money exchanges around. If you're going to be sending money out of the U.S., you're going to have to have a green card. If you're going to be sending money to Mexico, especially, let's start with that. If you're going to send money to Mexico, you have to have a green card. Otherwise, it's against the law. So uh, that would uh, certainly... Uh, dissuade a lot of people from coming up here because uh, you know they they have to send money, and then you're going to have people that are smuggling dollars back into Mexico. You see what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Here's the thing: as far back as the '90s, I remembered hearing about how Nikes were all of a sudden costing nearly as much in Mexico as they did in the U.S. because it gotten to the point that. Everybody had a cousin or a brother or a dad 
who had made it across the border legally or otherwise and was sending money back. And what yeah. happens then? What happens when you leave your country for the most part to just send uh, inflation? Inflation occurs. And then you literally can't live in the country you live in on the money you make. You have to have yeah. someone, you know, uh, uh, sending money back from elsewhere. And, you know, I, yeah, we, we just had Labor Day recently. Do you know the reason why we have, uh, you know, uh, weekends off and a minimum wage in the U.S.? Because people got shot. Because people were willing to get shot. People wanted things to change, and so they stood up against corrupt forces. And I'm sorry, Mexico, you want things to get better? You're going to have to change things in your country. That's how that works. Yes. We, we didn't go, let's just move to Canada. You know, maybe Canada's got better labor laws and we'll send our money back to our friends in Michigan and Tennessee. No, no, people, people uh, got shot down and, uh, you know, uh, they, 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 they had to deal with scabs taking jobs when people were picketing. And, you know, uh, so, yeah, I mean, you, you, you've got to make things better in your own backyard. Uh, the same deal with uh, what was it, the Dalai Lama saying, you know, you need to fix your country. Fix your fix yeah. your country. The thing is, is that it's so offensive, but it makes so much sense that the Dalai Lama would come out and say, hey, listen, because it makes perfect sense. I mean, here's the thing. If you're in Pocatello, Idaho, and you want to help northern African refugees, you should go to northern Africa, you know, or right. you should talk to Ikea. Ikea, by the way, had the greatest solution and nobody, I mean, they're still, they're making it, but Ikea made, you know, they make all this furniture that you, you're assembling. Well, they make houses that you can actually get houses and boxes and, and put them together. And they've got solar panels and uh, low voltage USB wiring. Uh, they're all put together, some of them are actually plumbed with regular hoses. I mean, and you can put these things together in a matter of like four or five hours. You got a house that is powered, so it's shelter. And you can put these things in shipping containers and send 20 houses in one shipping container to Northern Africa. If you really want to house people, that's how you do it, okay? You don't put them on boats and send them to Greece and, and God knows. I mean, what what I think people need to be taking a look at are the who is making the money and the rape and exploitation. You want to talk about the worst of the worst, the human trafficking, the prostitution, all the way across northern Africa just to get to Europe because Merkel said, hey, that's what we support. We want these people, and a lot of them are dying at sea. And then you've got these groups that are coming in to try to save them and because they want to protect people who are making this journey that they shouldn't be making in the first place. And people need to understand that you're going to have a major problem getting them back if they ever go back. And if they're ever going to learn German, Italian, French, I mean, whatever language you might have, if they're ever going to be able to assimilate to any sort of culture um, or whether or not Europe is becoming a Muslim nation, because I don't see much integration and I don't, certainly don't see this religion of peace uh, and you, you always hear that. That's a tagline. It's like, well, this is the it's a religion of peace. I've read the Quran. You could probably make that argument. But how is it being practiced? It's in, incredibly secular. So you're either you either believe in Muhammad or you're an infidel. And, uh, you know, there's no real room there. It's just a matter of what people do about it. So I can't see them in assimilating in in that culture, and I don't expect uh, Northern Africa is getting any better because of Islam. Uh, so I don't know. Run it down, landmines, green cards, 
visas, uh, how you're going to how you're going to deal with it. I mean, uh, the other thing too is is education. And and this is this is where it gets really bad because people get upset about this. Birth control. If you mention immigration and birth control, oh my lord! So what do you think? Should- oh, you don't understand. See, uh, uh, third worlders have a. I, I read this. This is true. I, I read it. Um, it's okay for uh, white people and Europeans to be outbred because we've got larger carbon footprints, dummy. Don't you get it? Our <laughs> carbon Just... footprints are bigger, dummy. Where have you been? It's okay. It's okay. We need to be outbred. Our carbon feet are too big. I read that. Oh, that, man. That, I'm, I'm not going to say that's true, but it's true that I read that. I don't know. It might be. It's true that it may, I read that. That's the quote of the week. week. You had a good run. It's time to hang up your hat. Your feet are too, your carbon <laughs> feet are too big. You know what? You should write an op-ed with, 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 with the title, It's True That I Read That. <laughs> it's true that I read that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it's true. We I read need to write a story. Yeah, they definitely, <laughs> they truly said that. <laughs> I will not vouch for anything more than, well, they're trying to pass it off. That's for certain. Oh, man. I want to see your sourcing on that, okay? We, no, seriously, you need to do an article on that. That would be hilarious. Um, there's some really crazy stuff. Uh, uh, so we, we recently had... Red Pill, uh, for those of you who read the Goldwater, uh, came out, which is, you know, we're using her real name in real life, uh, which, I mean, I don't know about you, but my stomach just kind of is like, oh, do you really want to do that? I don't know. What you, what you, some serious gall. Uh, to put right. your real name out, you know, I mean, because we use, uh, you know, well, I, actually, I mean, you use your real name. Uh, and I asked you, I'm like, are you really sure you want to be doing right. that? And, and you I mean, know, I, don't even use, I, I only use my first name at the site, but that still yeah. didn't stop. Like, I've seen pictures of family members' houses posted. You yeah. know, like I've got fans, yes. so to speak. So, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, I mean, regardless of what people say about and I find this funny because over and over again, I've heard people say, oh, you don't even use your last name. And it's like, well, the death threats to my family members are still coming in, if that makes you feel any better. Yeah. Meanwhile, and the you, New York Times, a bastion of, of journalistic integrity, <laughs> air quotes, you know, they just yeah. released a. Uh, an editorial by what? What was that person's <laughs> name? Anonymous. Anonymous. No. An op-ed. An anonymous Thank op-ed. You. Thank you, New uh, York Times. Because like now no drum? one can say a word about me again. Why don't you use your last name? I don't know. Ask Anonymous, the writer at the New York Times. Yeah. Why doesn't Anonymous at the New York Times use their name? No. Uh, I mean, there's some scary stuff going on. I mean, you see what happens. So, I mean, pretty much everyone. Um, Lexi, and it's, but you've been especially, I mean, and coming after your family like that is just wrong. Um, but it's just, it's crazy and it's going to get worse. Uh, but we're not going away. We are not going away. So, um, you know, I don't think that, uh, I guess the best, best thing we can do is just keep an eye on each other and make sure that, you know, uh, listen, if I'm going to kill myself, I'm not going to shoot myself twice in the back of the head, Phil. Okay, just a heads up <laughs> on that one. All right? <laughs> We're going to make sure that it's done right, okay? But it's it. I'll never be a double tapper, okay? <laughs> uh-huh. I don't know how you can kill yourself with two shots. I don't, anything, who does that? Anything other than, you know, I remember reading the Church of Euthanasia said that, uh, most painless way to off yourself would be, uh, yes, there's a Church of Euthanasia. I think it's like half mint is a joke. Uh, but yeah, according to the Church of Euthanasia, the, the easiest way to off yourself, and to me sounds the most fun, is a nitrous overdose. 
Oh, crap. Oh, See, God. now that's what they're going to do. They're going to be like, ha, ah, he mentioned nitrous overdose. That's what they'll set up. Never mind, never mind. No, seriously, I'm I'm not suicidal. I have things to live for. You know, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, is, uh, Ro, do we have a caller? Uh, oh, I thought I we don't. Oh, okay. I thought but I heard yeah, somebody no, on the, on the no, line. Yeah, no, I don't know. Uh, actually, uh, uh, Mr. Rowe, if you, I mean... Um, yeah, I mean, how would you... I mean, certainly you've got nitrous, you've got injections, all of that. I mean, you've got um, also this, this weird thing I think is being taken advantage of right now, which is uh, this whole belt thing. You know, people hanging themselves. Oh, wow. Uh, with, you know, which is nearly right? impossible. You know? It's not impossible, but when you don't see any signs of struggle, that means somehow their biological imperative was wiped before they slowly, painfully suffocated. They were yeah. knocked out or something beforehand, you know, because you can't. So, Mr. Yeah, I, I was going to ask, Mr. Rowe, don't you think that if if somebody was going to hang themselves, I mean, it's just natural. Most people, they're going to have scratch marks around their neck because, you know, you, you, unless you, you, you're you passed out or drugged. Uh, oh, I, I would think absolutely you, you're going to struggle. I mean, it's just your your natural reflex is going to be to try to survive. Um, yeah. So your body is going to be flailing around. Uh, I would think, um, you know, I, I'm not an expert on that kind of stuff, but yeah, I would think there would be. Yeah, there's a, a human body reaction to to pretty much anything. Um, like for like, a, a, here's a really good case in point. And and uh, Phil, you're 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 lined up to do this, okay? You're, you're Oh, You're I, gonna go. I, I, uh, I did try waterboarding myself once. I'm serious. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. uh, you and, did it yourself, or do you had somebody do it? No, I, I did it myself, and uh, it, it was uh, not, not fun or not pleasant. You know, I instantaneously uh, stopped, you know. It, it's, oh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, so the reflection, and, and I, I tried yeah, I tried not to stop. You know, you try to overcome your reflex, and it's just not. For me, it wasn't possible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, one thing that, that we did, uh, we were we were over, uh, Phil and I went over to uh, Singapore when, when Trump was there, uh, meeting Kim Jong-un, which wasn't a bad thing, trust me. Aside from we couldn't find CNN. Uh, we tried. We really did. We, we tried. But um, one thing that we did, we met these guys that... Uh, uh, is a New Zealand company, AJ Hackett, and they do uh, bungee jumping. So you go up, and they had this really big tower, and we just wanted to do a report from the top of this tower. It was kind of cool. And the guy jumped and said, hey, there's only one way down. You need to jump. And we were laughing about it. I mean, but the next day, we both went and jumped. Uh, we, well, I went, and then Phil went the next day. And there's something... Like a normal, when you jump, when you do something that is going to kill you, uh, you don't have control over that moment. I mean, like, Phil, how did you feel right when you went over, just right when you lost, you know, gravity took over? <laughs> that was I mean, uh, I heard this, I about heard this one and noise. a half to three seconds of, of sheer terror before the fun. The what yeah. probably the hardest part for me was, you know, your uh, they've got your your feet and you're all harnessed in like three or four different spots, and so you've literally got to kind of hobble forward. And I could not jump, and I could not look. I had to just, well, uh, you're supposed to lean forward. No, I had to pretend I was, you know, jumping off a step. I closed my eyes and yeah, pretended yeah. I was jumping because I just could not look and I couldn't do that lean forward thing like they were asking. No, I'm not going to lean off of the plank. I'll jump the plank, but I'm not leaning off of it. Yeah, and AJ Hackett Jr. jumped you. He was he was cool. Yeah, but you know that's that, that bring this up. Uh, like the the 
the inventor of bungee jumping. And I'm not lying. I was scared. Literally held my hand. Like, here, here you go, mm-hmm. man. Like, he helped me get to the edge. Of that That did, uh, psychologically anyways, that was, you know, that kind of helped get me get my mind right. Okay, this is the son of the guy that invented it. They've got a perfect safety record. You know, but that's the thing. There's your conscious mind and there's your irrational mm-hmm. subconscious mind. And guess what? You don't... Ne- I'm not a Zen Buddhist, you know, master. I'm I'm not a Roshi. So I can't <laughs> stop my pulse and lower my lower and raise my body temperature by 10 degrees. I don't have that kind of control. And you know what? Most people who weren't born in 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 Kunlun or, you know, uh, you know, and don't wear saffron dyed robes don't have that sort of control. <laughs> you know, most people who are not yogis and Roshis just don't have that kind of control over themselves. And I guarantee, you know, we're talking about the the belts and the and, and the doorknobs, the doorknob belt bit. Not a single oh, yeah. one of them I noticed. Not a single one of them were uh were, were Zen masters. No, they were right. they were Hollywood types, which I yeah. you know means <laughs> soft to me. Means soft to me. It it means you've had too much caviar and you've got no calluses. <laughs> 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 so, so getting back to the I mean I guess how we got onto this was that you like you really don't in that moment you have no control there, there is it, there is some sort of destiny there is something that's there that you are absolutely have no control over whatsoever and you're I don't know about you I wasn't sure whether or not I was going to die or not um, uh, but then when you, when you take, <laughs> when the first thing that you want to do is like, do it again. I don't know about you, but, uh, the reason I bring this up is because I think that people, when you're in that state and you have absolutely no control, you'll say or do anything. It's like Mr. Rowe talking about waterboarding himself. I submit that you know that's the first way to do it but then maybe you should have my brother come <laughs> actually this isn't a joke um i do know a, a guy who um spent some time interrogating people at gitmo right when they got the green light to waterboard and i talked to him on on a different level um phone conversations with with uh people in my family uh, who had, you know, certainly political beliefs and were part of a campaign. Uh, And he talked to me about uh, the music that they would use, the the number of things that you can bring, you know, to someone that will really put them out completely out of their mind so that um, there is no more God. There is no more hope. There is no nothing left. No hope of of, of living or surviving. Um, in fact, he was talking about how uh, he could make people want to hurt them. So it's a t- total mental and physical torture that goes on. And uh, <laughs> we did we did a there was an article that came out and I asked the, the, the guy that I'm talking about who was an interrogator at Gitmo um, I asked him if maybe you know was he the source and it's an innocent thing but basically he or a person who was an interrogator there uh, released the, the top 50 songs that they use to uh, to play over and over at like 150 decibels, 24 hours a day, and and um, Slim Shady, uh, the uh, Eminem, the rapper, his song was on that list. And I don't know if you guys know that song. It's uh, it just it's kind of repetitive. Uh, you know that song? I'm Slim Shady. 
I was in my late teens in the late nineties, so I could not escape that. Yeah. Okay. There's always some dumb. You know, I worked at McDonald's in 1997. Of course, I've heard that song. You know, okay. I hung out with with guys who were in their late teens who worked at McDonald's in the late '90s. Of course, oh my god, yeah. like it's it's uh, it's definitely. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I can I can see that as being literal psychological torture. After after a while, it for me, you just have to pay, play it back to back twice, and I, yeah. you know. <laughs> And these guys are getting it at 150 decibels 24-7. And somebody, this was funny. Uh, I guess Mathers is the guy's Eminem. His name is Mathers, I think. Um, But somebody reached out to him, and I guess he's got different, I don't know, political beliefs, but somebody reached out to him and asked him because his, you know, they they said, hey, do you realize that, that your music is being played in interrogations that torture people? And he said, anything I can do for America. And I, think that was, I mean, that really is the best. I think that was right after the Boston bombing. Right after that happened, that article came out. And, you know, they were talking about interrogating people. Now, hey, I think it's been pretty quiet on the, on the whole terrorist front here. I mean, we don't want to jinx ourselves, but Europe's had their problems. And every time you see a truck run over some people, you're you're getting worried. But you have to admit, I don't know. I got to ask you, Phil, are the terrorists behaving? (laughs) (laughs) It's it's not so bad here, but you forget uh, forget North American Europe. Europe. You know, Canada's, Canada's still got issues. But no, you're right. We haven't, we haven't dealt with any, uh, uh, apparent jihadis ourselves. Um, now that said, uh, I take that back. We're talking, you know, when when you say terrorism, most people their mind jumps to Islamic extremists, uh, and I'm thinking of the the Canadian 13 year old girl killed by the Afghan uh, oh, refugee yeah. uh, recently. And so that happened. But then I remember, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, we get that same thing, except it's MS-13 or some guy who killed his wife in Mexico and then crossed the border to, yeah, like that stuff still Uh, happens. It's not what you would call typical, organized, ideological terrorism. You know, there's supposed to be an ideological component to terrorism. I don't know. I I think... uh, Chaos and killing innocents, e- even just for the fun of it, you know, that it, it's it's terror. It's terror to me. So yeah, uh, well, as far true. as organized ideological terrorism, yeah, yeah, it's been it's been fairly quiet on the U.S. front, but uh, yeah. in Canada, aka uh, you know North American Europe, it's it's still an issue for sure. <laughs> That's true. And the thing that uh, you, you used this term a while back, I think, um, yeah, I mean, right when we started talking, and you, you, you threw out this term that really stuck with me, and you said it's, it's weaponized immigration. Yeah. And there's, yeah. there's so much truth to that, because you can use these people as weapons. It certainly is a weapon. Um, I don't know how bad off do you have to get to destroy a culture just to get votes, or is there more to it? Do you I, really I, want to destroy civilization? The cognitive, the cognitive dissonance that allows the same Jewish thinker who says, "You know, Europe won't survive unless we uh, uh, change its quote unquote monolithic cultures." That's what Barbara Spector said, for instance. Mm-hmm. That we need to bring in these immigrants and change the once monolithic cultures of Europe, make them a multicultural zone. And uh, they're saying the same things about the U.S. These same folks who uh, who will argue that Europe and the U.S. cannot survive unless unless there is demographic displacement. Basically, let's let's cut to the chase. Demographic displacement is the end goal. There. Meanwhile, yeah. we cannot open the borders. In Israel, even to ten refugees, because our people would not survive. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on. But didn't you just say 
All right, I forgot. Gulliam aren't really people. You know, I've got a really good idea oh, before. Yes. To explain that kind of cognitive dissonance, everyone needs open borders. Oh, Israel can't survive with open borders, though. Well, which is it? Which is it? Does it kill people in cultures, or is it good for diversity? Yeah, I have a I have a really good idea before we go to break. I'm sorry I haven't been reading the chat here, but uh, before we go to break, uh, we should ponder this a little bit. I've got a, a brand new idea, hot stuff right off the press here, Phil. Um, I think that we should probably build an amusement park in the Gaza Strip. <laughs> Okay, like where everybody can have fun. Okay. <laughs> Ferris wheels. Think about that. We'll be right back on Revolution. things were not quite right, that everything was just ever so slightly askew. Do you have, to paraphrase Morpheus, a splinter in your mind? If you're interested in hearing the latest information about UFOs, the paranormal, ancient cultures and structures, monatomic elements, longevity, fantastic discoveries in science, download it to your brain, then tune in to us. Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Mackie. And we are Shiny Side Out, Sundays, 2 to 4 a.m. Eastern. See you then. Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. You don't need to expect us. We're already here. Join me weekdays for my new show, Tell Chris Joe. It's going to be a problem show brought to you live from Kensington. Thursdays, I'm dealing with hot topics, heated debate, what's new around the world, and ring-ins to discuss listeners' problems and offering considered and heartfelt solutions. So join me, Chris Hart, for Tell Chris Joe. Stop what you're doing, grab a cup of tea, and coming live from Kensington. Relax, let me entertain you with a coffee bar online. Listeners, very personal problems. So that's Thursdays, 2 p.m. in the afternoon, Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. See you there. It's going to be lots of fun. Hello, my name is Mr. Rowe. I am the host of Reality Extraction on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. I utilize logic, intellect, and magic to methodically autonomize, vivisect, analyze, examine, study, scrutinize, and extract an essence of reality from a fog of illusion and confusion. You can find me on Studio B every Thursday at 1700 hours Pacific Time. That's 8 p.m. Eastern. No topic taboo, no subject too strange. I strive to take a neutral standpoint during the dissection of the topic at hand. That's Reality Extraction with Mr. Rowe on Revolution Radio. Is your data safe? Do you have the necessary information to assist you in confidently living through just about any survival situation? Is survival and gardening, off-grid living, medical knowledge, or even natural or man-made EMPs on your list of personal concerns? Do you have your documents and your personal information in a safe place in your hands where you know where it is? Well, check out our preloaded EMP-proof thumb drive. 
Over three gigs of survival documents and how-tos, plus the USDA offline food preservation website, and much, much more, including a surprise bonus we just can't tell you about here. With plenty of room left over to store your most important documents. Imagine if a mega virus or computer failure took out your bank, or all the banks for that matter. Are your banking records safe in your hands so when they get things fixed and repaired, you can say, hey, look, this is what I had. You have it. I want it back. Is your personal data safe? Family records? Addresses? Phone numbers? We'll squeeze on over to freedomslips.com. Yes, that's www.freedomslips.com. Click the banner on the homepage for the EMP proof bullet drive to get the full scoop of everything that we offer. So, folks, keep your data safe for your peace of mind. Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. You don't need to expect us. We're already here. Looking for a nightcap to fill your listening needs? Come join us on Spaced Out Radio with me, Dave Scott, right here on Revolution Radio. Monday through Friday for three hours a night, starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, we will take you down the supernatural path. From ET contact to the paranormal and all of the spiritual, cryptid, and conspiracy stories in between, you can find us right here on Revolution Radio at spacedoutradio.com, on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio, and on Facebook at Spaced Out Radio Show. Spaced Out Radio, it's a night of talk and interaction. Are you experienced? The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host... Good morning, Manila. I mean, this is the same type of thing. Are we five by five here? This is the story behind the story with uh, uh, filling in for Dr. A. True Ott, who is on a mission. A mission, uh, <laughs> I really I really want to know what he's learned, uh, hopefully. And we're joined by Phil. Are you on the line, Phil? Yep, yep, I'm here. Okie dokie, hunky dory. Uh, so I, I, I left a, a, a kind of an abrupt suggestion. At, at the end of the hour there about possibly opening up an amusement park on the Gaza Strip. What do you think? Uh, you know, uh, well, you think. you're getting typhoon uh, yeah. okay, let me check yeah. the chat see if we're okay oh you're you're coming in a little bit better now okay yeah yeah uh a lot of people don't realize the show uh fidget spinners were originally invented in like the 80s uh to entertain any kids so that they would be less likely to or or so yeah, yeah, I think I think <laughs> at least keep a merry go Well, I mean, you could have also. I mean, think of the possibilities, and a lot of people. I mean, um, a lot of people are probably understanding where I'm going with this. <laughs> supposed to have a sense of humor anymore come on uh so if you 
opened up an amusement park, uh, what kind of rides would you? <laughs> you know where I'm going here. I mean, <laughs> in defense of dark humor, I believe that it's it's the the topics that are the heaviest that are most need most in need of being made light of. All right. Well, then let's dive in. Okay. <laughs> Remember that moment when you went off that tower. And by the way, you have to go Macau at night. That's the, um, that scene. Really, oh, oh, yeah. man. That's, that is deep darkness. That is, whoa, uh, terminal velocity of, of deep darkness, death. Uh, but something you should explore while you're alive. Um, we're not giving up. But, uh, hey, you know, I mean, we've got boundless uh, possibilities here. Uh, I'm going to, you know, go with a, uh, a little, like, uh, like you could have if you put on a vest and press a button. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. I've got... And it either goes down. <laughs> I've got an idea. The teacups ride... Except it's a Moroccan tahini or tahini or <laughs> how do you pronounce it? <laughs> a tahini is actually the yeah, name yeah, of a tajine, Moroccan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to ride the tahini again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, for for our, um, our listeners, the um, a tahini is actually the name of uh, pottery. Uh, it's it's and it's used to cook. Some incredibly good Moroccan. Yeah, yeah. Tajine is like an art in cooking. Uh, and the, oh, by the way, need to plug somebody. If you're talking about tajines, you want to know more about tajines. The woman, who, and she spent a lot of time in Morocco, and she's absolutely. She is. So fascinating. She is. She's got uh, probably thirty cookbooks named after that woman, and married to named Bill, who is a mystery novelist. And uh, the two of them just make such a wonderful couple. They live uh, in California, uh, and they're, you know, they really don't want to rock the boat with any sort of political beliefs. But they're libertarians at heart. They don't like. If anyone uh, wants to learn more about Tajine, uh, definitely. She's cooked for me. She's given me Tajines. Uh, she's just an incredible person. I mean, all of these people are just, they know their jobs. And her job is food, and his job is, is to write. Uh, I. These are people that are seeing life through different angles, and they would appreciate these these types of dark humor jokes. Uh, but we're going to get right back to the topic: an amusement park on the Gaza Strip. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> who's going to? I mean, first of all, who do we get to sponsor that, Phil? Uh, uh, Sheldon Adelson. There you go. Now and we're Michael talking. Michael Chertoff, they're, they're going to do it. Okay. That way, that All way, right. OSI can have the body scanners at the front door to keep it safer for everybody. <laughs> With the chemical wipes, uh, you know. I am evidently at the perfect stage of sleep depth. You know that stage of sleep depth where it's sort of like you just took some kind of uh, alterant, you know, and you're a yeah. little more. Yeah, I'm evidently at that perfect stage of sleep dip right now. <laughs> That's perfect. Good. Keep those endorphins going, my friend. We've got uh, a little more time to entertain the, uh, you know, the public worldwide with this. Um, yeah, amusement parks in the Middle East. Uh, 
Uh, there's so many riots, like the zipper. <laughs> uh, we're, we're really going into it. I think that um, like you could do something totally innocuous, like a Ferris wheel. But Here's here's the big question, okay? And, I mean, I, you've been to Disneyland, Phil? No, no, no. I've never been to Disneyland or Disney World, and I honestly never want to. Disney is literally evil. I've been to Six Flags. I've been to uh, uh, nobody nobody outside of Tennessee has ever heard of Lake Winnipesoka, but I've been there too. You know, Six Flags, Lake Winnipesoka. Uh, Kings Island, which I think was technically a Six Flags location, but yeah, yeah, no, no, uh, I, I have luckily uh, never been to to Disneyland or Disney World. I I, I, do, I don't trust that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's kind of creepy actually. Uh, I, I had a girlfriend uh, when I was going to college who uh, worked at Disneyland, and she was one of the characters. That, like. You know the people in the suits that that walk around and and hug kids, you know, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and we've got a whole series of underground tunnels, and there's all sorts of weird stuff going on. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And evidently, they don't yeah. check to see if the guys that hug kids for a living are currently on trial for uh, child rape. <laughs> That's happened more than once. Come on, guys. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. it's the happiest place in the world for a pedophile. <laughs> well, so, I mean, we're starting brand new on the Gaza Strip with our amusement park. And uh, we're just opening up, but we're going to need a little uh, a little creative uh, department. Because what kind of mascots are we going to have here? <laughs> what do we do? I mean, are you going to have Snow White? Or are you going to have, you know, Tommy the terrorist? Or <laughs> who are you going to have? No, no, no. They've already people. got. They've already got far for the uh, Palestinian Mickey Mouse. That already exists. Well, You've seen far true. four, right? He looks just like yeah. Mickey Mouse, except he says stuff like, "Come on, kids, we've got to sacrifice ourselves for jihad in order to take down the great Satan, Israel, and the U.S." You know, that's that they, they don't, we don't need to invent new characters. They've already got that going on. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, he's front and center. Uh, let's make sure that his bomb is just, um, you know, maybe puts out a little puff of smoke. Okay. You know, because uh, he's going to have to show up for work tomorrow. <laughs> right? It's going to be, a, you know, a problem retraining these people every day. So, um, all right. So, what what kind of rides do you think? Um, yeah, maybe you know, Mr. Rowe was talking about uh, waterboarding. A water slide, maybe. waterboard. There you go. Waterboards. There we go. Oh, we're talking. <laughs> the enhanced interrogation room. Yes. Thrills, fills at the amazing waterboard water park ride. Uh, uh, experience the ultimate terror in our enhanced interrogation cell. <laughs> For those of us join, joining in um, just now, um, we're not going to apologize for what we're talking talking about because I think it's funny. <laughs> I think it's, <laughs> this is, yeah. So we're going to uh, keep going. <laughs> well, um, I'm going to have, actually, you know, I had just gone out. I wanted to give a report about the uh, typhoon here. Uh, the place I'm in right now didn't have a window, so side to check to see if uh, you know roofs are getting blown off but uh, I can report that everything's calm right now it's actually stopped raining here in Manila and everything's calm beautiful people uh, wonderful places good morning to you 
and so we'll just uh, we're just gonna we're gonna keep the hits coming. I think uh, really. Can you do the Mickey Mouse thing again? Okay. Uh, I'm just going to keep on going. I can't do anything there else. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I got into a little typhoon spot there. Uh, but we're just going to uh, keep on going. And with the theme of what upset you the most, I know we talked about a little bit about 9 11 uh, on our show. Uh, that, that we broadcast uh, over at the Goldwater. And by the way, oh, also I want to thank May. May is our engineer uh, and she runs a studio over here here in Manila and she's been doing just an incredible job. So uh, I know you couldn't get to work today, May, if you're listening, thank you for everything you've done. Uh, what we're gonna do is uh, get a recording of this show and uh, broadcast that on HM, and then of course we'll be putting everything on the Goldwater. And you can look uh, up our shows uh, if you go to video. And the other thing I wanted to talk about, Phil, is uh, we're going to be redoing uh, the our, our top banner. Uh, we've been getting a little bit of attention lately <laughs> with. Um, some of the feature articles, some of the stuff that we're doing. Um, most notably, Lexi and her body count series. Mm -hmm. uh, that specifically has to do with the Clintons killing people. And uh, we're unashamed to say it and to report on it. Did you notice that, uh, did you see where she got? PolitiFact, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, PolitiFact. <laughs> They come out and they say, well, that's a lie. And then, oh. then proceed to not right. actually debunk it. They, right. First, they call it a lie. And then they go, it can't be proven. We didn't it, say that it what, was. We said it might be. <laughs> we showed where it could be. And they go, well, okay. yeah, yes, he was about to testify. But we don't know that they killed him. We didn't say <laughs> we knew. He, you know, we're just saying, well, here's it. Uh, nothing. Case of suspicious death. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and to get our readers up to date on this, okay. Um, and this is a, a, a recent article. This is uh, the 11th in a series to be undetermined. Uh, Lexi has full reign to keep going. Uh, we haven't even dug into Vince Foster or any. I mean, we really haven't even gone into Mina. Uh, and of course, uh, I. There's, there's some people that I can line up and interview with. I mean, there's a there's a, an incredibly close source who is living and real, uh, who uh, is is going to team up with Lexi about some of this this other stuff. Um, but uh, these are researchers that that know this. So the the most recent article that we're talking about is a, a woman named. Uh, oh well, no, she. He just did Suzanne Coleman, but the one that PolitiFact was doing was the house explosion, right? Wow. Okay, look at this. Let's, oh, by let's the go. way, uh, uh, I don't know if you saw the chat, but uh, Mr. Rowe had a couple other suggestions. The Haunted Mosque, um, exploding bumper cars, which the exploding bumper <laughs> cars reminded me that we could have a transit set up. We uh, call it the trolley of peace, but it goes really fast and you can't see the rails, and so you just got to be careful. Because <laughs> they might run into you is the thing I was getting at. Because that's what <laughs> foot yeah. trucks of peace do. They, 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 they uh, enrich you with cultural diversity by running you over, you know? <laughs> we need this. It's okay. <laughs> 
Uh, no, I haven't seen the chat. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to talk right now. <laughs> that's just so, that's just, oh my god! Uh, man, I like the bumper cars. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Let's. Uh, uh, we need it. We need to uh, get back to uh, this house explosion. Uh, I think this is like number five or six. Which one was this? Uh, about to testify. Number six. Okay. The woman in the trash chute. Okay, here we go. So uh, uh, we're going to go over this, and I, 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 I checked this. Okay, I checked all of this. PolitiFact came back to us, and Lexi, she sent me a message and said, hey, you know, they said they debunked my story. And I'm like, who said? Who said that? Um, just because somebody has a pretty little red X and says that you're lying doesn't mean that you are, because we, we looked at all of this. And I'm going to go through the entire story here. And anyone, we're open right now. I will personally make an editor's note and a formal retraction and an apology to anyone who can tell me that this woman was about to testify against the Clintons regarding the Clinton Foundation making money and making backdoor deals with pharmaceutical companies. Mm -hmm. Now, the woman's name is Carol Palladino, C-A-R-O-L-E-P-A-L-A-D-I-N-O. And she was, her house exploded. The whole house went up. And her and her husband, John, she's 72, he was 73. She was set to testify as a witness against the Clinton Foundation regarding their dealing with pharmaceutical companies. I stand by those facts. I tell you that that is true. If I am wrong, please email me burdock at thegoldwater.com. I take full responsibility and I stand by this article. So, PolitiFact, if you're tell us why Lexi is wrong, tell us. I've read this entire article, and there is nothing wrong about this article. I think that it's disingenuous, and we need to debunk you for putting a little red X next to us. And in fact, actually, um, I don't know if you saw that. Uh, it really upset me. I think that what we need to do is warn our readers that the really good, good stories are debunked. <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost like a badge of honor. It, it really is. It, it's almost like um, some of these stories that are, you know, and I have to wait for Snopes to get in on the action here. Uh, I think that we should just start saying, hey, this is certified gold water. Debunked, debunked. We should maybe have a have a, a little uh, a category up up top there with all of our debunked stories. What do you think, Phil? Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And an explanation because I've noticed that with Politifact, um, Politifact like straw men, you know. Uh, mm. Instead of when they debunk a story. No, they will take one thing Alex Jones said that is totally untrue, you know, about a true story. And they'll be like, well, Alex Jones said this. And so it's the whole story is debunked. No, 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 no. Just because this one detail was reported improperly in this or this or this source, that doesn't mean that the story is debunked. That doesn't mean yeah. that, that nothing happened. Uh, and that's so. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, uh, I don't know if you got a message that I sent the other day. I was thinking maybe um, a sidebar category menu as well, since our uh, uh, the the top bar is 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 getting about filled at a capacity. Yeah, 
that's prime real estate up there. So, uh, yeah, you're right. Um, and we're, uh, uh, Jim Cherney and, uh, and I were, we were talking about, uh, maybe putting an aggregator, uh, on, on, on a bar just to try it out. Maybe even having a subdomain so that we can have a news aggregator and what we'll do as editors is choose all of the stories that are being filtered. Okay, so all of the people that are getting banned from Twitter and the people that are getting, you know, shunned, for example, us not being able to be searched on Google for uh, in a news capacity, uh, all of those stories, people that are actively being filtered, we're going to promote those stories. Uh, of course, we're going to make sure that uh, the sources are, are correct and, and the people that are writing the stories are you know, honest. But that's going to be, uh, I think, a section as an aggregator that we'll have over there. And uh, uh, we'll be able to put a little more. Ad uh, we do have uh, some advertising. So, yeah, I need to uh, tell folks that we do. We just started putting a single ad on the Goldwater. So before when we were we were talking about the fact that we don't accept donations, we have no advertising. We do have one ad right now on the Goldwater, and I just need to say that because uh, that's paying for uh, a writer at this moment. So a new person just got a job because of that ad. Uh, so we are funded, but it's by people, you know, here. We don't take donations. Oh, and speaking of donations, while we're uh, over here, uh, you, seriously, the archives at Revolution Radio, <laughs> how many gigs and gigs and gigs? I mean, you, a lifetime of incredible radio. Uh, you can listen to Mr. Rowe's show. Uh, if you guys have ever tuned in, that is some really good stuff. I need to, I actually, I need to call in and talk to Mr. Rowe. Uh, uh, check his show out. There's so many things on Revolution Radio that are just incredible. And the best way, because these people, uh, we're, we're not making any money. We don't get paid. Phil and I don't get paid for this. So we're here because we want to be talking about these things. It's important to all of us and it's important for you know, for us to get uh, an amusement park in, in the Gaza Strip built as soon as possible. And I think we should start with bumper cars. <laughs> but please subscribe to the archives. That's the best way of doing it or just give a donation to Revolution Radio. You can go to revolution.radio uh, and uh, just uh, throw in some money there because uh, bandwidth and and uh, and whatnot. It takes a little bit of money to keep this operation going. So uh, that is the plug there. And uh, yeah, uh, finishing up, Lexi, incredible job. Uh, and I'm in fact, I've, I'm going to pitch her latest article. Did you read this one? This is the 11th in the series with Suzanne Coleman with the uh, gunshot to the back of the head. Oh, Did no, I don't think that? I've read that one yet, no. That one's uh, just hot off the press, and, and anyone interested in reading that article, uh, that's in their body count series, <laughs> right, at the Goldwater. I noticed that uh, a lot of these advertisers, uh, there, there was an advertiser that, I don't know, somebody maybe asked whether or not, uh, I don't know what it was, but I got an email and this really angry email for somebody we don't even do business with. Uh, and apparently I have no, idea, but they said that we're banned from their network. And I'm like, we never, and I looked, I'm like, we never did business with you in the first place. We're, we don't trade traffic and we're banned. Awesome. You're banned from our network too. We'll just make it a mutual thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, uh, you know, and they made a point of explaining because you have the uh, you, the body count, and and so they they <laughs> they put a link right to the you know Lexi's series, and so we're being banned. Like, 
I don't even know who you are. Why would we care? You know, it's a preemptive ban in case you were thinking of doing business with them. They just wanted they just wanted to drop their two cents in saying they don't want our two cents. Right. You know, should I drop down in the corner, you know, and give them an extra tier? I, and I, I actually did take time. I'm like, I, I thought maybe like I thought maybe you or, or Jim or someone, uh, you know, maybe Diana uh, was talking to somebody about exchanging traffic or whatnot. But no, these people out of the blue made a point of saying, hey, you're banned because of this. Um, typical behavior these days. It's, it's just, you're bad, I'm good. You're bad, I'm good. So, I mean, you know, I think you're a generally good guy, Phil. Uh, you're, you're a dear friend. But, you know, there's stuff I don't like about you. <laughs> I, I can't think of anything at the moment, but uh -huh. I don't make it my life passion. That's not my commitment to our relationship together, okay? <laughs> Right. You don't wake up every morning thinking, hey, what do I hate about Phil? Okay. <laughs> that must be exhausting for people who do base their whole life on what they hate, what they're, you know, yeah, that's uh, bile is bile builds up and it's just not good for you, you know? But they're, they're running out of words, okay? I mean, we were talking about this that they love this word because it starts with an X and it, it rolls off the tongue really well. I've been called a xenophobe. Uh -huh. Right. I mean, <laughs> now, wait a minute. Do you know what the word means to start with? Okay. It's uh -huh. a fear of other cultures. It's a phobia, a phobia. So you you have a fear of anyone from a different culture. And I'm a, I mean, you're a xenophobe. <laughs> Uh huh. What? That's probably why I get a thrill from being like the foreigner in a crowd of two thousand while walking down the street. <laughs> I, I love seeing you in an elevator here. This is, I mean, we, we <laughs> enjoy. We, you know, nobody is forcing us to live in a different country. We love it. Okay. Uh -huh. um, I, I spent half my adult life living in foreign countries. Okay. I mean, and we're xenophobes because it starts with an X and it's bad. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, folks. I mean, or um, maybe we talked about immigration. Maybe we did. <laughs> landmines on the border. Okay, I'm a xenophobe. Give me, I'm going with chemical landmines. What do you think? Or you know what? Do they have bio? Maybe we should do some bio. So you, you, you want you want something that turns out like that that final scene in the uh, Indiana Jones in the last in the in the last crusade right where the guy drinks in the long grail. Well, it's got to happen. The guy opens up the Ark of the Covenant and his face just melts and everything. Yeah. Um, I want that to happen one time in front of a bunch of people, <laughs> and then it's over. Then it doesn't oh, have to happen. Anymore. Hopefully, it's a, hopefully it's a deterrent from there. Yeah, I think that should do it. You know, <laughs> they should. We should put the Ark of the Covenant, you know, Indiana Jones style, on the border. And in fact, actually, we need to put one in the tenderloin <laughs> in San Francisco. <laughs> Did you see, uh, okay, we, we had an article, and this is really, really sad. I don't know. Did you watch this video uh, where this man, who's he's a convenience store, he's working at a convenience store, and um, there's some, they call them youths, youths. Uh, I'm going to be racist. I, I'm just, I'm going to happen to point out the fact that uh, there were three black people, uh, a man, and it could be his two sons, uh, went into a convenience store and started stealing things. And the owner, rightfully, or, or the manager, I believe, it's the manager uh, of the store, he rightfully says, well, don't steal, you need to pay for that. And 
they argued and they during this argument which should never happen because people shouldn't be stealing uh, the man had a heart attack and I mean it just drops and this is all on video he drops on the ground and is in critical he needs immediate medical he's in cardiac arrest and what happens after that is indicative of why you would need the Ark of the Covenant or something very close to it in pretty much any black neighborhood. And you can call me racist. Go ahead and say it. But the fact is, is that the education of uh, the, the crime mentality has to go away and and police should be profiling there are plenty of white criminals okay but there is an entire culture based on race that allows this type of behavior to happen and i'm going to tell you what the rest of the story is and you can go and watch the video if you want because everyone that i've seen and if you look at the comments down below this isn't about hating black people. It has nothing to, it has to do with bad parenting, bad culture, bad, whatever you want to call it. But for a man to die or come close to death and be in cardiac arrest, and for these people to, instead of calling 911, rob everything they possibly can out of the store, and not only once, but come back in and out of the store three times and the very dollar oh the, the guy that the, the, had the heart attack yep oh they god took the, they took the dollar out of his hand the last dollar they robbed the cash register they took all the cigarettes everything they possibly could and they took the last dollar that he was holding while he was having a, a, a cardiac arrest and didn't call 911. Now, what on earth, what kind of society, what kind of civilization is that? You know, like that I is- said about the, it, it really is, it's not a racial thing. It's, it's uh, I'm not a racist, but I am firmly culturist because I've noticed that, uh, you know, uh, once you get into uh, extremist Islam, it doesn't matter if you're uh, if you're Chinese, a Chinese Uyghur, or uh, you know uh, uh, an Indonesian, or a Malaysian, or an Arab, or an Egyptian, or a white guy from from Luton. You know, mm. it's it's this culture. The same thing, you know, uh, in the town I'm from. There, it's a small southern town. There's uh, there's some black folks, but it's mainly white folks and Hispanics. Uh, white folks mm-hmm. and Mexicans for the most part. The There's still that whole, what I would call, the urban culture scene. Uh, you know, the, the wannabe grows uh, is, is a term I like to use. Uh, and these folks who listen to thuggish, you know, rap music that glamorizes uh, drug dealing and pimping, you know, uh, a lot of these people who really get into that culture, they end up being really crappy people because they idolize and look up to a toxic, you know, I, I hate using that term. When they talk about toxic, uh, tox, it's a toxic culture. Uh, an article at The Bird oh, says Reddit banned the QAnon, uh, the, the QAnon uh, uh, subreddits because of their toxic culture. No, 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 no. QAnon's not a toxic culture. Uh, Gangster rap. Gangster rap is a toxic culture. It's misogynist. It glamorizes crime. It glamorizes hard drug abuse and selling drugs. Uh, You know, that's a toxic culture. You know, ban Reddit r slash gangster rap. I'm I'm not sure if that's, I'm sure, excuse me, I'm sure that's a subreddit. You know, uh, I don't know if that's, a bad one or whatever but yeah you know if you're gonna go after toxic cultures go after truly you know uh toxic cultures that said 
like I said, I'm I'm culturally libertarian. Until you cross over that line, you've got the free expression. You know, the the rights of my fist end at your nose. You know, yeah. uh, I can't I can't touch you. I can't hit you without well, without your express permission. Uh, that said, you know. Yeah, there's there's certain cultures that if you, you uh, it, it's 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 not so much just a racial thing. There's more of a cultural component because, uh, you know, <laughs> I've joked that most of my black friends, you know, they talk, mm-hmm. that's the, the whole race. No, I have black friends. But, yeah, I'll admit it when I really when I really think about it. Most of my black friends uh, like listen to metal music and read comic books and. <laughs> and, and like sci-fi movies or, or play D and D and Magic the Gathering. So technically they're just black in you know, technically they're African African Americans in skin color, but you know, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean like it's 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 definitely it's a to- it's totally a cultural thing. Yeah, I mean there's a and there's uh, there's the obvious, okay? Which means that all you have to do is have a memory, okay? A memory. Now I'm thinking back to uh, the three occasions that I've been robbed. Uh, one of them at gunpoint. I have to have a memory of that. I mean, those are you know, it's 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 not a nice thing to get robbed. And you just have to think back as to where you were walking and who did it because you don't want it to happen again. And you certainly don't want to bring your family in that area. You don't want to get robbed and killed. I mean, that's, you know, so as human beings, we tend not to like put our hand on a hot stove, right? That means that I'm probably going to stay away from black people at, at, in the tender line. Okay, or I'm going to be carrying a gun, but I can't do that in San Francisco. So, what's the solution? You just don't go there. And my so opinion, now that's there's... prejudice. Prejudice means you judged before having any evidence, but then yeah. after you realize, you know, when I'm in that neighborhood and I hear these yeah. people who talk this way, like I, I, yeah. I had a gun held to my head. Uh, some mm-hmm. some thugs trying to rob me. Once again, though, this was in McMinnville, like you know, a decade or more ago. It was white guys, but guess what? They listened to gangster rap and they, oh, yeah. they talked in in their modified wanna be grow Ebonics. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and we can say we <laughs> talked about this, and, and we're very careful about using this word. We're very very careful about it, but. There is no reason that we cannot put this word in quotations and say it on the air in the proper way, okay? Uh, whether it's spelled G-G-A or E-R, <laughs> I'm going to say it. I really am. I'm going to say it in quotation marks because we're going to talk about the word nigger, Okay. In quotation marks, we're going to talk about it because it really is like, what does that mean? You can say it. I'm racist if I even say it and even put it in quotation marks. But we're being honest about this. So I think it's OK uh, here. It's, I think it's OK to say we're talking about this word. Uh, why not? Why should we be so afraid of it? Why, why, you know, I mean, really, because it, the whole thing is, you know, somebody puts a gun to your head. Uh, that's obviously, you know, a form of fear. So why can't we even talk about how that word is being used, recirculated, and the fact that it's being used against white people? Uh, they're trying to grab every single ounce out of it that they possibly can politically. And when I say they, I mean the, the Soros's and the people that want new world order, the people that are flooding countries with refugees uh, and to what end, we don't know. So I think, you know, uh, I'm, I'm gonna open up uh, the last 15 minutes of conversation if you want 
Uh, and we can talk about the word nigger. <laughs> I hear Phil went off the line. Are you still oh, there? No, sorry, I was I was using the keyboard, so I muted there for a second. No, 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 no. I was I was I was bracing and just I, let, let me see where this goes. <laughs> no, I mean we can talk about it. It's the word. Uh, we're talking about the word. We're not calling anyone a nigger. We're talking about the word nigger, and it's okay to say it. It really is. It's a you know. I mean, I looked it up this morning. It's I okay. Think it's a shame. Okay. I think it's a shame. Why is it that all the racial slur words are the funnest words in the world to say? Yeah, no, you you got a you really know? good point. You speak cat walk. Yeah. You know, they're fun words to say. Well, keep in mind we're on we're on FCC regulations, but um, if if you censor yourself enough, go ahead. Let's let's. Oh let's, yeah, yeah. Uh, I heard Don Lemon once say. I think this is a safe thing to say. I once heard Don Lemon say on CNN, he used the word nigger and the lady just like gave him this look. That was the one time in my life I ever had respect for Don Lemon, by the way. Don Lemon, who is voted worst journalist of the year by Columbia Journalism Review. That's <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. Like they literally guy, voted him worst journalist of the year in 2014. No, he's fantastically screwed up. <laughs> I, I, I don't. He's he's special. Have you seen that know. video where uh, Chris Cuomo is got his like arm around him and they're all like they're awkwardly flirting with each other, and then like yeah. voice over the last guys, you're on. Like oh okay, because yeah. they were talking about an after. It was like. Christmas or something? They're talking about an after party. Am I gonna see you at the after party? Oh well, you know I'm gonna be there. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh, it's hilarious. I, you know what's weird? It's like, I love so hard. He's. I mean, that's okay. I think that's great. I, but I, the the impression I get every single thing I see, and some of his uh, his articles, or uh, have you seen some of his op eds? It it's like whoa. It's almost like he he's getting adjusted to planet Earth. Okay. <laughs> he's, he's just adjusting. Uh, he's a new he's new in town, and there's Let's face there's no other. CNN needed a gay black guy, and they couldn't find one that was also a good journalist. So yeah. thus we have Don Lemon, the worst yeah. year 2014, yeah. according to Columbia Journalism Review. Oh, you, you remember know what? the time when, when he was talking about Malaysia, the Malaysian flight? And, oh, my God, I love that. And he's got the whole panel of experts. He's like, well, you know, there's some people thinking, like, it could be like that, uh, you know, that show Lost. That mo He said that movie Lost. That movie uh -huh. Lost. It's like, dude, you already, you already screwed the pooch. You don't have to disembowel it afterwards. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> nice. Uh, you know that movie Lost? It could be like that. And then the lady just like pauses, and she's like, "If I don't play my cards right, I never get invited to see in again. I can't make the newscaster look stupid." She's like, "Well, I don't think, you know, Lost was a TV show. It was just a TV show." And she left it at that. Well, so I don't know. Are you? Are maybe we should try to get an interview with. With Don, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? I know he wants Are to you? talk to me, yeah. No, I, I think, actually, I'm trying to figure out who would be the best on our team to do it. Uh, oh, man. Uh, <laughs> anyone, really? Oh, uh, no. All right, I'll tell you what. All right, we'll, we'll do this on the air. Um, We've got about 10 minutes left on the show here, but uh, we'll do this on the air. Uh, I want to make a bet with you. If I can get at you an interview with John Lemon, okay, mm -hmm. you're going to have to jump off of the cow tower backwards. You're going to have to go back backwards. Backwards. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. You're gonna have to do it at night. 
how can I even? Like, I can't <laughs> jump forwards if I'm jumping backwards. And I couldn't even do the... Oh. They're just, they're just going to let you go. They're, they're going to let you go. Oh. Okay. All right. We got a deal? I mean, you know, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I'm a man of my word. That's gotten me in trouble more than once. Mr. Rosa Witness, if I get you an interview with Don Lemon, then we can we can proceed with Macau. Yeah? Yeah. All right. You got a deal. You got to uh, take so, that secret underground, uh, underground, what, what was it? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. What do people know about? Oh, uh, actually, uh, I can, uh, it's the Hotel uh, Gia, Gia, I think, Gia, yeah. Um, it's a hotel that's closest to the lighthouse, and I think it's G-H-I-A. Uh, it, you know, I mean, as far as Macau is concerned, reasonably priced. Uh, but, yeah, uh, the basement, you have a basement, and that's a, a strip club, uh, you know, full service, everything going on there, anything that, you, you know. But then there's a basement underneath there. They actually, you know, this is like... Uh, and you can only get in there after somebody kind of invites you to go. And uh, I think you pay some money and you have to get your hand or you get a sticker put on your hand. And I think they put it on your hand and not your shirt just to remind you that you shouldn't be touching anyone. But down below there is some really weird stuff that goes on. Uh, really weird. Uh, and I mean, uh, so uh, Macau, and this is in China. This is China. So there's gambling and pretty much everything, but there's an industry there, and and um, it's an incredible place to go, especially if you love uh, a mix of different cultures. I mean, because the Portuguese were there, and the Portuguese influence, and the port the Portuguese wine, the Portuguese food is all through there and mixed with Asian. So, um, yeah, if you go to Macau, uh, you have to jump off Macau Tower. I'm going to plug AJ Hackett. I mean, they're friends of ours. Uh, they're just great people. So um, we'll, be, uh, we'll be running over that. Uh, Phil, you will be going to Macau and jumping off because I, I promise I will. <laughs> uh. Uh, okay. No, hey, it's listen. not able to. I'm just gonna say no hard feelings, and that's totally fine. No, there's 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 one or two ways about it. You can either agree to it, or we're gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> so we just like track him down and. Yeah, we'll do it. Okay. I mean, you know, I found there's... I found a pin. It's it's a pin, but it's actually an HD camera, so you put it in your breast pocket. So, like, we could do some classic gotcha journalism, some Project Veritas type crap. I'm thinking we should probably stop by uh, the Bay Area. Go to your favorite up. gay bar and try and pick him up. There we go. That would work. Well, so what we should do is because he's, uh, you know, we should pick up Mr. Rowe on the way. And uh, Mr. Rowe can take care of everything that requires, you know, waterboarding and whatnot. We'll <laughs> It's all taken care of over there. I um, waterboarding. <laughs> waterboarding. Waterboarding. Don Lemon is the most pleasant image I've had in my in, in in my whole mind. Like probably all week. Thank you for that, by the way. Waterboarding Don Lemon. I'm hearing his voice. The gurgling and the yeah. That's that's yeah. kind of beautiful. Waterboarding with it with a touch of taser. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, okay. We can incorporate uh, right. into the amusement park as well somehow. Um, bro, a, a, a bumper car filled with water that's uh, because it's already hooked to the, all that electricity. <laughs> 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 and we put Dom in there, and uh, you know, whenever he. I don't know. He doesn't have to do anything, actually. I think it's just a tortured victim. I, I think we need a, you know, just a victim. You know, it's it's time. <laughs> it's time to have a victim. 
Okay, well, we'll pick you up on the way over. Okay. And uh, you can take care of all the torture, Mr. Rowe. Uh, th- you know, and again, uh, thank you so much for producing the show here. It's just uh, we have so much fun. And uh, I- oh, do you have any word on uh, True? Is True going to be back? Uh, I heard he's still traveling. Um, I, I have no idea. Um, maybe next week. So I don't know anything other than that. And I haven't heard anything from Alex either. So. Yeah, um, well, neither have I. And I'm just, I'm just sending money at this point. I haven't heard anything back. Uh, but I'll, uh, So we need uh, to let everyone know labvirus.com, L-A-B-V-I-R-U-S.com is Alex's site. If you want to take a look at, I mean, he spent a decade uh, putting together all of this stuff, and you want to find somebody who's an incredible researcher. I don't care if you think about uh, how he gets from A to B to C. The man is always making a point. And uh, certainly, I keep going back there, and I'm constantly fascinated, and I change my opinion about some of the stuff that I read there. So please go to labvirus.com. Uh, Alex is currently being held on $2 million cash bail, and uh, we will never forget him. He's always here, and we're going to get to the bottom of why the state of California finds him to be so valuable. Uh, I don't know. Uh, this is just a lot of this stuff is very perplexing. And I know True is upset. I'm upset. Uh, I, you know, pretty much anyone that's worked or been around Alex knows who he is. Uh, the man's not a terrorist. He's not a threat to society. So he just has some different opinions. And none of them have to do with, and I'm going to say the word here, folks, quote, niggers, unquote. Okay. And I'm saying that for the effect of the word and having to explain all around it obviously means that we got a problem with language and being honest with each other. The superb of uh, everything that we're doing here at Revolution Radio, the purpose of it, this network, is to speak the truth unbridled, a hundred percent, the last bastion of free speech. Phil, yeah, I mean. You, you, you got, I mean, you got something for me here. <laughs> you do, I know. <laughs> you do. Uh, bumper cars? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think, I think the, the gas will be kind of a, have to code Great show. Listen to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com and we'll be right back after this message. 